Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're doing some pack openings on Magic Arena. Uh, there's a button on the store for $15, you could get um, 3,500 gems and four of the card designs. And I picked it up because I realized it's a lot cheaper um, and a lot better, especially for me, to buy my standard cards on Arena. Because even though I enjoy um, paper cards more like playing with friends and stuff, I don't get out to like the local game stores to play all the local tournaments and stuff. And so I really would never use them to play. I'd only use them every now and then to play with friends or relatives and stuff. And so instead of paying... And here I got $15 for 18 packs instead of $50 for 18 packs if I bought paper packs. And obviously packs are a bit hit or miss on what you're going to get. But at least in here you can get wild cards and stuff. And so yeah, I picked it up. Um, I already had 500 gems left over from beforehand. So um, let's see what we're going to get. I'm probably going to get... Uh, since I haven't opened many War of the Sparks on here, I'm probably going to get the 15 packs of War of the Spark, and I'm probably going to nab three of the Ravnica, Ravnica Allegiance. So I'm going to start with those since these are a bit older. Let's see what we get in the first one. Alright, Shimmer of Possibility. I already have four of those, so that's why I think I got another... Or, I don't know. I don't know how that works anymore. But yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I already have a full place of this because it's from my Gate Goats video or whatever. Ooh, alright. Um, that's alright. I didn't mean to click out of it so quick, but it was a Lavinia or Zorius Renegade, whatever her name is. Um, I don't know if there are many decks I'd use her in, but still cool nonetheless to have. And then the next pack, Tome of the Guild Pack. Um, nothing spectacular there, but another wild card doesn't hurt, because that's nice to get some of those for any other decks I'm trying to build on. Azorius Knight Arbiter. Um, that's a bit expensive. Uh, nothing crazy again here that I seem like Ooh, there we go. Mythic wild card. That's good. That makes it worth it. I'm like, even if you don't get anything else in the pack, those mythic rare wild cards. Very, very nice. Alright, um, now I'm gonna buy the 15 packs of this, but I'm probably only gonna open a few today. I might open five today, and then open the rest in another video. Open ten. You can open ten at a time. Holy cow, that'd be terrible. I wouldn't want to do that. That'd go through your pack so fast. Alright, let's see. Alright, another rare wild card. Good, good. Because I want to build a cool deck, right? But I'm like, I don't have many of the cards. So even if we don't get a ton of them in these packs, um, well, hopefully we'll get so many wild cards that we can actually build a cool deck. Thunder Drake, that's a cool card. Um, four mana, flying whenever you cast your second spell each turn. Put a plus one, plus one on them. That's cool. I don't know how good that is. Uh, it's a bit expensive. But I think it'd be fun. I might make that and like make a deck out of it just to see how fun it'd be. Let's go! Nickel Bullish Dragon God. Alright, that's awesome. Blue, black, and red mana. I'm gonna have to make a deck with like Niv-Mizzet and Nickel Bullish. That's so cool. I wonder, are there any like meta decks with him in it? I have no idea. I, I need to check. I'm sure he's using some. But that's awesome. Anyway. My theory is um, that Modern will come to Magic Arena because event like after they moved Kaladesh out, right? And after they put um, Ixalan out, or after Ixalan is going to cycle out later on, I think that they're going to keep the files in the game. And they just don't want Modern right now with just Kaladesh being different. Because that would leave, like, like the whole difference between Standard and Modern would be one set. So I, I think they're going to, once Ixalan cycles out too, that'd be two whole sets. Like, they'd have both Ixalan and both Kaladesh sets to add to the Modern things. And so I think they might add a new mode then when they bring those cards back in the game. Because I, I think it'd be so cool if they ended up having Modern on here, because I, I, I miss Kaladesh. I honestly, it was my favorite set ever, and I hope they make Modern out of it on here at least, because, I don't know. I could always play Magic Online if I wanted to do it, of course, but it'd be more money. I could always sell the cards back. I should probably look into it. But either way, I think it'd be fun. I think that's my theory on it, that they will add Modern eventually once. Oops, I almost knocked my mouse off. That's why I panicked there. Vizier of the Scorpion, that's a cool card. Um, zombies you control have Death Touch. That could actually work pretty well, I think, in some of the zombie decks. This one, this is a painful one. Spells your opponent's cast, costs two more to cast. And at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses one life. Let's go! Gideon Blackbeard! That's amazing! Two cool planeswalkers. That's awesome! Two mythic planeswalkers and a mythic wild card so far. I'm stoked for this. I'm gonna have like a whole bunch. <gasps> I have not seen that card before. 
Oh, I'm gonna have to use that, even if it's junk. I'm gonna make some like something so I can play in the unranked mode. I'm like too into the artwork on cards, and like if it looks cool or if it's cute, whatever, I use it. Devouring Helion, that's cool too. Let's see. As Devouring Helion enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice any number of creatures and or planeswalkers. If you do, it enters with twice that many plus one plus one counters on it. That's pretty decent. If you run a like um a black red aggro deck type thing and like something that spawns a whole bunch of the zombies for the black deck, so you could get some pretty cool plus one plus one counters in that. Dude, no way! A Johnny the Great Hearted? We've gotten three planeswalkers in a row. I know that um War of the Spark has a lot of planeswalkers, but seriously, this is awesome. I don't even know what kind of deck I'm gonna have to go for now. I'm like, I don't think I'd get this many cards. Okay, Banehound, this is a really good card. Like, this reminds me of kind of like War of the Sparks version of Bombat Courier from Kaladesh. Like a really cheap one mana cost that can actually put in some work for you. I don't think it's quite as good as Bombat Courier because he doesn't get the card advantage part. But it's still really good. Like for a common, it's not bad at all. Um, let's see. Spell Gorger, weird. <laughs> Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a plus one plus one counter on him. All right. Uh, Bottom discipline's all right. It's a bit expensive and it doesn't really do a whole bunch if you're in the middle. If it's not going to be a finishing move, because you might get life against stuff, but it won't get rid of any other creatures. Vivian's Arc Bow. Okay. All right. Uh, I think I have one of these already. Um, for X and tap discard a card. Look at the top X cards of the library. You may put a creature card with converted mana, co mana cost X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah, like, if mid-game you have a spare um, land or whatever that you don't need, you can just... Uh, oopsies, excuse me. You can just discard it and get a decent creature. That's not bad. I, I, that could be fun to use, I think. All right, this is going to be the last pack of the day. Um, and then I'll save the rest for another episode. Thunderjack again. That's a cool card. I really like the artwork. I might buy that in paper just for the artwork. Dumbry's Ambush. Plus, p plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control, and then that creature deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Dumbry, Anarch of Bolas. Dude, let's go. We've got so many planeswalkers today. Creatures you control get plus one, plus zero. And for plus one, add mana. Creature spells you cast this from King. That's cool. I like that because. Especially in red, like if you cast a Rekindling Phoenix or something against a control deck, that could be decent for making sure that you don't get that spell countered. I like that. And the target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. So it's basically like mutiny or, right? Isn't it called mutiny? Alright, that's not bad at all. Alright, well, that's awesome. We got a whole bunch of cool cards. I'm going to actually go into just a random deck here and show you the Planeswalkers we got. Or at least the planeswalkers we have so far. Look at that. I had like four before yesterday. <laughs> um, Sword and Vengeful Bloodlord. That's actually a really fun de um, card to use, I think. I like him a lot. Um, Gideon Blackblade. We got Domri, Anik of Bolas, Ajani the Greathearted, Nickel Bolas, Dragon God. We have a ton of cool planeswalkers. I'm like, if I could figure out some way to make a Super Friends deck out of these, <laughs> that'd be crazy. Um, I actually, just before I made this pack opening, I saw someone using a Jenny the Great Heart with a whole bunch of cards from War of the Spark. I don't remember what it was, but it was pretty good. It was like, anytime you gain life, put a plus two, plus two counter on this creature or something like that. It was pretty good. I hadn't seen it before. But um, I need to look at Nickel Balls' cards. I didn't actually look at them before. Uh, Nickel Balls Gen God has all loyalty abilities of all other Planeswalkers on the battlefield. Oh my word, I did not know that. Could you imagine a super deck, a super friends deck with him? He could literally do anything. If you draw a card, each opponent, or you draw a card, each opponent exiles a card from their hand or a permanent they control, destroy target creature or planeswalker, and each opponent who doesn't control a legendary creature or planeswalker loses the game. That's crazy! Because he's plus one, right? And so it might take four turns to get up there. But like, if you have Sworn Vengeful Bloodlord out there, he gets plus two a turn? That's crazy. Let me see. I don't think anybody else has more than that. Yeah, not of the ones that I have. That's so cool, though. I'm stoked. We got so many cool planeswalkers. I'm going to make some fun decks. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm probably going to save these for the other 10 packs for another episode. So that, not necessarily because I want to get more videos out of it, but I don't like opening all my packs at once because it kind of,
takes away the fun, like, like I don't know, I, I don't like opening it all in one because it takes it only one session, like only like 10, 20 minutes and then you're done with all the packs, but if you spread it out across a few days, you know, it's kind of gives you something to look forward to and it feels more spread out, it's like multiple Christmases. <laughs> so yeah, thanks for watching guys, see you next time.